What's up? Let's talk about some true things that we know. We can know that there is no God. There are people out there that cannot know this, that have invested so much in the belief in God and have so much cognitive dissonance at anything unjust or, or violent or dangerous or awful that they sweep it away under the rug and they pretend like it didn't happen or it doesn't mean what it means or it didn't, uh, it didn't imply what it obviously implied. People that believe in God are deluded about themselves and their value in the universe, but also about the universe itself. The universe is completely apathetic to everything human. The universe is an idiot. Talk to a stone or a carrot or even a beaver. A beaver is far more intelligent than a stone or a carrot. It's capable of creating dams and having children and finding food. And yet, conversation starters are a no-go. Beavers are dumb. They're worthless in a party. I mean, they're, the only cool thing about them is you could touch them or look at them or uh, release them into their habitat. Uh, but they can't program, can't do math. So our intelligence is also very weak, even the smartest among us, in comparison to prodigies or to the potential. Because computers show us intelligence can grow exponentially far beyond our reach. And Homo sapiens is built off the idea of two things. Homo is sameness, and sapiens is knowledge. We're so proud of our intelligence, and yet a majority of us believe in a God that just obviously doesn't exist, that is disproven every day. Every day, if you pray, you will find a way to see that it's not okay to assume your prayers are heard. They are not heard or given any special privilege or power. It's just wishing to yourself and to others. That's the other thing. And this one's the biggest, is that religion feeds off of virtue signaling and it is never so prominent as when some psychopath is in the midst of fooling a ton of people about his moral worth, his or her moral worth. There are, uh, you know, hashtag feminism. There are priests that are uh, women. There are preachers that are just as full of it and just as capable of taking your money and spending it on private jets and feasts and all sorts of creature comforts to deal with first world problems. How do we know there's no God? Well, prayer doesn't work. That's obvious. All religions claim that prayer does work, but it doesn't. Um, holy texts are full of contradictions and falsehoods and stupidities that are purely historic. But how do we really know? That's the question that you get from scientists and agnostics and theists. Because the idea that if doubt is there, there's still hope. Like, oh, and there's that desire to believe. Because what is there to believe outside of higher powers? only lower powers. And those are disappointing. Robots don't do that much. Lower powers can't accomplish great tasks without being organized so that they can interact successively, one upon the other in a sequence. Lower powers have to congregate to get anything significant done. So we all wish that there was a higher power because the things that challenge us make us 
destitute and desperate for some way out of the humdrum experience of mediocrity to which we can't always even attain. That sometimes our lives are grueling and petty and repetitive and discouraging and sad. And we see our kids having worse lives than we've had. And we have to blame ourselves. But that's what religion doesn't allow for. You cannot blame yourself because Jesus took all the blame for you. Or Muhammad has given you the key to knowing who to blame. It's the non-believer. Spoiler alert. Now go kill them. Now that portrayal of what religion is, is overly simplistic. And obviously some people manage to get moral decency out of religion by cherry picking the texts and the, you know, holy men and just picking the ones they like the most. Maimonides and uh, uh, Augustine and, you know, whichever cousin of Prophet Muhammad you like the best. And it will matter a great deal to how you behave politically in this world. Because the fact that all humans share 99% of our DNA and a huge deal of similar everythings is swept under the rug by this, the mere existence of small differences, like pigmentation on skin. Like it's a big deal to have a face tattoo. That was one thing that I was fooled about. I thought it was a big deal. So before I got this one, I made a stamp and I would stamp it in ink and I'd put it up there every day so that I can train myself for the life of having a face tattoo. No, having a face tattoo is just part of being ugly. <laughs> There's nothing unusual about it. There's nothing rare. It's just a pigmentation issue that occurs in different forms. Nothing is special at all. But that's not fair. Things are special and wonderful and you can find them everywhere. And there's every reason to keep trying. And hope is eternal. It is definitely part of the human spirit. So don't get down about there being no God or purpose in the universe that the only purpose we have to eke out ourselves. Don't feel grumpy about that because you create the purpose in your life and you get to choose the parameters. And if at first you don't succeed, lower your standards and try again. And then succeed at some smaller quest and build those up until you have something grandiose. Like the idea that you will abolish racism for all humans. It's a beautiful idea. We'll all be one, one moral group of decent people seeking prosperity. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing on earth could challenge that vision, right? It's inspiring that we can get across all of our differences, but our differences are so vast, right? And sometimes they are. Sometimes behaviorally, we are night and day, and one person can look completely foreign to you because you look at what they're doing and you shake your head in disgust. How can a person, an intelligent person, spend their time and effort and money like that? That's terrible. And a fresh perspective would find the same thing to be true about you. So who's right and who's wrong? Well, peaceful people are right and violent, destructive people are wrong. And everybody should know that. And not everybody does. So we live bickering in a life of petty pursuits and disagreements. And there's really no escape from that, except for its reduction. Thank you.